All right, welcome to another edition of What the Fuck Happenings Here in the Mendham with a bit of a ragged voice, but he'll have to do, I guess. I <sighs> don't know. Don't know. <laughs> yeah, don't really, I don't know. You go to sleep, then you wake up, and psh, something's broken. Uh, but anyway, so Benatar video, and uh, then I did do a Degrassi Tyson uh, Spolowski guy uh, free will thingy so there are two videos to choose from but obviously I would say the Benatar one is the more significant uh, uh, just yeah depressing so what can be said I mean he's basically just evading the responsibility for the tough decision and saying I can't do it or I wouldn't do it or I'm too uncomfortable doing it and there's really not a choice um, the fact is walking away is you know doesn't work in this scenario it's too too much is at stake to say uh, I can't make the decision you know you either go to war or you don't go to war uh, well in that case the <clears throat> you know the cop-out is such an obvious well then I guess you're saying no you're not gonna go to war um, and you can't really I mean, the vote would be in a democracy, the people who choose not to vote and the people who vote for the asshole are com complicit. And, you know, the people doing, you know, they hold their nose and do what they have to um, are the only responsible players. So, I mean, this idea that you just, you know, that you're going to evade the fact that it's a decision. You can't just walk away. So he's basically saying... When he says, no, I wouldn't uh, do the right thing and press the button, um, that he would choose to do the wrong thing, you know, and not press the button. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> you know, it just means that his whole book and everything he's about is just kind of weak and useless. Um, obviously, there's no point in advocating for a position if you don't think the position should win the day or that it. Um, uh, is the truth so why advocate for it if you're not sure and you're uncertain and you're vacillating between these choices then why inject yourself into the trial and try to sway the jury one way or the other it's just uh, doesn't make any sense frankly it's not very logical blah 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 I would uh, I would have ex expected his own intellectual uh, character to say oh yeah that is just weaselly bullshit and uh, you know I shouldn't do that <laughs> you know I shouldn't just evade the subject that I wrote a book about and he basically did all right so we'll, we'll play some of this other stuff that's before that tragic moment and uh, such So I could parallel this to an analogy I use a lot, which is, say, if it was your decision. And um, so there's malaria, and uh, it's not a good thing. Millions of people affected by it um, caused much grief. Oh, I'll shorten this for you. Uh, yeah, so you've got to choose. <laughs> you have a pile of money. Do you spend the money on nets to save the present, or do you, you know, risk uh, everything on attempting a cure that will save trillions of dollars and millions of lives and all of that stuff. And uh, it's a tough choice, but you know, you gotta, you gotta use your best judgment and um, press the, bu the button, so to speak. Um, you know, and he's basically saying, no, he wouldn't be able to make a decision and not making a decision would be, I uh, guess, nets. Band-Aids. Don't save the future. Visionary mechanism goes into overdrive and they excessively populate and all of that. So we're still on the subject of whether human beings should cause more chaos and destruction and uh, is that a, the, the right road to victory in the end? I would argue that anything that causes chaos in civilization would be a complete detriment to what you're really after, which is to have a human race that's highly educated and um, makes responsible, cautious, careful, thoughtful, um, as complete as possible 
a trial of the facts. You want a really good trial. You don't want hecklers. You don't want bullshit. You want a nice, clean examination of what the reality is that we exist in. And you want that done by people who aren't can cotton candy eaters kind of thing. You, you don't want it be done by mental children. <clears throat> Our democracy can do rational things. It's proved that it's figured out that animal cruelty for the fun of it is not acceptable. Uh, you know, it banned bullfighting. It has banned dogfighting. It's done some clever things. And that's what we needed to do, is to be smart and clever and do the responsible and uh, correct thing. Yes, the number of people in the ballot is a variable, but it's not the only variable. There you go. Uh, you know, and it's an insanely complex, really, when you start talking about ecosystems and... So, um, yeah, so it's almost a non-subject because you can't, in the first place, probably truly fairly evaluate what exactly the current condition of Earth is versus some condition it would be in if humans didn't degrade the environment. Um, hard to say exactly how many more or less animals are in how much more or less distress, so I'd say it's not much of a subject. And frankly, if it's going to be used to make our democracies dumber, uh, then it's really a bad idea to even talk about it. Take it to, let's take London or New York, for example. Well, what's the number of rats, for example? And so, okay, it's still the same kind of subject. So again, you can go through. I remember seeing a film from Australia, some farm that got taken over by mice. And so I even talk about that, how they're just swarming all the, you know, millions of them in these swarms. Um, so you know that, uh, you know, it doesn't take much to sustain a huge population of highly sentient organisms in a, in a beaker, you know, in a petri dish, so to speak. We'd have a wild rat, they are wild rats, but um, the high rat population... All right, so he sort of echoes that subject a little okay so well, and all the peripheral stuff that's outside the city so yes all the stuff all the uh, the infrastructure that's outside of these chaos centers is also you got to include all of the change that takes place there so all the factory farms that aren't technically you know they're feeding the cities but they're not uh, in the city do that a perfect um, a perfectly developed um, um, uh, artificial, <laughs> not art. Uh, so I was looking for virtual reality. Oh, so hard. Um, you know, and even that has its downside in that you still have to create the deprivated or hungry or horny organism to play the game. You still have to ha know the negative to be able to appreciate a positive condition. You have to be afraid of the quicksand to be happy to be on the ground. That kind of stuff. Is there's, you know, you're just leaving a door open to the chaos, breaking the vial and allowing the anthrax to, you know, so, yeah, no, it has to be, it has to be, a, you have to finish the job. You can't. Right, so the, the argument is, is if you want to do this thing, you got to do it on purpose or it's not going to be done well. And it's too delicate a thing, too many ways it can go wrong for you to just happily accident your way into this painting. You're not going to, this isn't going to be a painting where you have happy accidents. Uh, it's going to be a painting where you're saying it's got to be so precise and every dot and every piece of paint's got to be applied very carefully or it's not going to be the painting it needs to be. It's, it's, it's going to be a failure, not success. Doing it halfway isn't any Yeah, so if you're going to do it, <laughs> do it right. Because doing it wrong is way too easy. Um, Denying the logic because he doesn't want to say, okay, I will be a rapist. I will commit an evil um, because I... Right, so I was just getting into this. He's being, um, he's avoiding the, you know, bread button kind of issue. 
Uh, and it's just as intellectually dishonest as, you know, somebody, you put it to them. You have to do something to save 10 people. You have to do it to one person. Um, and then we're talking about trillions in this case, you know. And the fact is, is no matter how unpleasant it is, no matter how it's against every bit of your nature or anything you could possibly like doing, and it's also torturously uncomfortable for you to do it, you still have to do it. I mean, the obligation is beyond a reasonable doubt. To, to really know some of this stuff, I mean, it's like you have to actually have been in an insane asylum or you actually have... So I'm just making the point that I guess Benatar really is just an academic. This is just some sort of thing that came to him as a anti-culture kind of thing. And that, that is his pattern, frankly. He does write books where he tries to turn racists, you know, the, the anti-racist into a racist or tries to, you know, he tries to justify... Um, you know, chauvinisms. He try, you know, he's, he's trying to make excuses for all kinds of uh, opposite opinion kind of stuff. And this is, that's about all this is. It's just some sort of contrarian uh, perspective, contrived contrarian perspective to some happily ever after silver lining human perspective. So he's just trying to be a naysayer to that. He doesn't really. It, 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 his, his, he has no uh, horse in the race, so to speak. Sort of uncertain knowledge. You won't use any of the knowledge you have. And if anything requires you to hurt anything at all, to do any negative, any negative potential, uh, therefore you can't act. Right, so he'll never pay. We have to pay for everything in a way with blood and guts and send you into, you know, suffering. And he won't pay for anything. So you got to pay with suffering to save the Jews in the war. You got to do these things. And, and he's unwilling <clears throat> to accept any decision that requires him to, um, to, to, to accept the fact that you got to pay for it. He doesn't want to pay for anything. So pretty much as simple as it goes. He, he wants free answers and there aren't any. Nothing courageous or good is going to happen with free solutions. I mean, there's there's just no positive uh, value to existence, and that's just a fact. It, the Martians, no... So he's even, as I believe I remember correctly, he even uses the empty Mars argument in the book. And so, um, you know, he's, he's he makes the argument that there's... What's the downside? I mean, what where do we explain how there's a horror somewhere that... Because there's no Martians, there's some kind of terrible tragedy somewhere. Well, there isn't any. Um, so again, this is a complete cure, and he's rejecting it on some principled ground that I will not make any decision uh, until I am actually God. So he calls it playing God. He calls it these things, and he's basically saying, okay, so no important decision can be made until we all go to God school. You know, until we're all uh, PhDs in being a god. Well, that's not going to happen. We're never going to get that award. We're never going to go to that graduation. So nobody's ever going to be able to make any tough decision ever. Well, that's just such lame cop-out. That, that there's some possible risk that he misunderstands the circumstance. Okay. So he starts making up silly things like, well, what if the button doesn't work? Uh, you know, uh, uh, what, what, what if it's a button to a toe polisher and it doesn't really eradicate any? What, what if, what if, what, uh, you know, all this what if crap that's not part of the thought experiment. And again, the thought experiment is really just to see how deep your commitment is in the sense of how you're voting for this thing. All right. So what, what, what do you actually vote? Well, what if it was an election, all right, a referendum on the ballot? Would he say yes on the ballot? So it's a ballot initiative. Uh, let us uh, organize ourselves to make a you know graceful exit of the human race and the animal organisms on Earth, and to do it as humanely and gracefully and as passively and as grandfather them outish way as possible. Everybody just lives out their lives, does everything nice, nice and clean. We just try to get this nice little job done, um, graceful, graceful. Um, 
you know, ether all the way down, you know. Uh, <laughs> and uh, why, is he going to vote for it? So somehow <laughs> it has it has more credibility as an idea when you are got a, a bunch of bandwagon riders with you than you... You're, you feel uh, appropriate in your vote because there's band rag, wa wa wagon riders, but you yourself can't understand whether you're right or wrong. You need, you need the rest of the moronic civilization that's done nothing but be retarded its whole existence. You need it to support you before you understand that you're smart enough to make this decision. I mean, it's hilarious. <laughs> it's so silly. I mean, as an intellectual, he should be mocking his own reasoning. It's so pathetically silly. I need the democracy to support me, or I am not sure I'm right. What? To have been, because you don't have good reason to believe that. So again, it's just all a fraud. It's all just academic mush. Yeah, it's just very tragic that he would even use these words and these phrases when he thinks it's evil to think that way. It's You're not allowed to think that way. You're not allowed to have a thought like that uh, because you're not God and you don't have infinite knowledge and you don't have a crystal ball that can tell you exactly how everything's going to turn out. So you should make no decisions at all. I mean, just too ridiculous. And again, and what are we? What are we risking? Like I said, in his own book, he acknowledges, well, I can't conceive of what the hell we're risking. I mean, where's the downside risk? Mars. What's the downside risk of Mars? Oh yeah, there is no downside risk. There's no concentration camps on Mars. Hey, it's coming back. All right, it ain't gonna happen. Uh, and so he's qualifying that somehow. Oh, oh yeah, so that was another, I guess, one of the failure arguments that a lot of people use, that somehow you can't eradicate it. Of course you can, all right? <laughs> so it's physics. The physics says, yes, you can, all right? So it, it's just a nonsense statement. No, you can't do it by, um, you know, buying a lot of Mr. Clean and pouring it into the Great Lakes. Yeah, that probably won't work, uh, but it can get done. I guess reading your book isn't going to help them learn anything, okay? It's learn how to pointlessly waste their time. Waste your time reading a book, making a person... Yeah, yeah, so do the whole argument, make make the, this decisive, uh, you know, argument, and then say, but you can't use any of this decisive argumentation or any of this substantially one-sided point of view, and there's only one reasonable way to see it. Uh, but forget all that, because we can't do any of this trial stuff. So even if you convict the murderer, well, we have to let him off because we just not we can never be sure we didn't fuck up somewhere. So yeah, that's no, we can't put somebody in jail when we can't be one bazillion times sure or gazillion trillion times sure. What's what's the standard of our certainty? You know, before we're allowed to do the right thing. Uh, again, it's just too silly. No point in him writing this book. Somebody else should have wrote it. So even on consequentialist grounds, there's very good reason for just saying... So he's saying even the people who write his book don't aren't smart enough to know what the arguments are and to defeat their own uh, psychological biases. So even though... So, so yeah, this, so he's using this kind of as an excuse that somehow people are too vulnerable and the past shows were too... We make too sloppy a decision. Well, that's what your whole book is about. So you've already diagnosed that disease and cured yourself of it. That's the whole point. The whole point is that you've risen above the bullshit and you've decided that, yeah, I understand what a good trial looks like, okay? You present evidence and there's rules and there's no cheating, uh, you know. You don't just draw funny pictures of the defendant and hold them up to the jury, you know. No, no shenanigans, no bullshit. You know all that, so um, you know your. Yeah, it's, it's it's time to make the grown-up decision. Radio show or something, the Kennedy assassination and Jack Ruby, and you know I didn't realize how you know he died of lung cancer. Yeah, well, so I was just doing a little personal analogy thingy, um, <clears throat> but um, yeah, you know the the whole idea of somebody with nothing to lose. So Jack Ruby was maybe in that category that he he wasn't some hero. Uh, in the sense of going after Kennedy and sacrificing everything when, well, if he, had, if he knew he had lung cancer, he knew he was fucked. 
he was just saying, well, I might as well go out with a bang, you know, and that's, you know, a lot less of a, uh, it's not as heroic, let's put it that way. But maybe some other bug could even look like an ant, all right? And just even, I'm just seeing a glimmer of movement. And, all right, so then I was just talking about how you, I, would, I, would, I would err on the opposite way in the sense that I wouldn't worry about I, anything that looks a little bit red as a button. I'm hitting it, okay? It just has to even be button-shaped, and I'm probably hitting it uh, because I know how much is at stake, and you're so desperate to make sure you can get this done. Any opportunity you have to get it done, you get it done. You don't let that thing slip away. You don't let this last little chance to grab this rope, you know, that's going to save everything, you know, and you're just, you're just any glimmer of idea of rope moving, you're going to be grabbing it. Um, kind of thing. So yeah, I'd be squishing a. You know, if there were seven ants that had anthrax, yeah, I'd be squishing anything that looked like an ant, right? <laughs> you know, anything. <laughs> you know, a dog might. Well, it could be a. You know, some, some cases. cases. But he has the right. He's saying, are claiming. Uh, to do the right thing because you can't know it's the right thing. So I did use analogies like you're sitting at the dinner table with Hitler kind of thing. Uh, the waiter just happens to put a fork in your hand in just the right position. To, you know, <laughs> uh, you're not going to act because it's murder. I mean, no, bullshit. So don't do anything. Don't, don't give to a charity, don't not give to a charity, don't vote for, don't vote against, don't do a goddamn thing because you don't have perfect knowledge. So again, that's what it comes down to. We're all going to be making these decisions. We're all going to be committing mass murders, so to speak. We're all going to be, you know, blah, blah, guilty. There's going to be blood on our hands. I mean, even in the last few elections, right, didn't matter who you voted for, you knew they were going to go drop bombs on people and blow up their families and all this kind of shit. So you knew there was going to be blood on your hands no matter who you voted for because they were, they, you know, both parties have decided that it's a wonderful thing to um, play terrorist wars. It, you know, tit for tat bullshit. Let's behave as badly as they're behaving. Because you're just going to sit there after you convicted him and you're going to say, well, are we really sure? I mean, you know, there was DNA and fingerprints, and he also confessed, and he also told us where all the bodies were, and, uh, you know, although there was 764 witnesses, he videotaped the whole thing. I mean, we have all this evidence, but, you know, we're fallible, so I guess we can't do anything, so I guess we'll just let him go free, because it doesn't really mean anything that all the evidence indicates. No, that's not good enough. Yeah, so while I'm mocking it, obviously, it's just, what, what logic is there here? There's got to be a point where you say you have to act on your reasonable understanding, and if there's no choice, if I, I, I don't have the opportunity to go ask the democracy, <laughs> you know, and, and regardless of me, me even knowing that they wouldn't be for it anyway, can't change the fact that it's a decision, it has to be made, and I just have to use my best honest judgment. And that's just the bottom line. And there's nothing wrong with a human being doing that. That's exactly what you're supposed to do, is use your best judgment. You're put in an important position. All I'm expecting for you to do is use your best judgment. There's, nothing, you know, there's no other standard you're at. And we know that what's corrupted most of humankind throughout all history is that people haven't used their best judgment. They've used the judgment that gives them the best outcome, the what's in it for them. And that's all they've used. All they've stated is what's in it for me. How do I, do I, what, do I get 50 cents or do I get $1.50 if I change? If I do this decision, I get 50 cents. If I, you know, and they're just saying how much candy do I get out of the game? And we know that judgment isn't worth anything. All right. So uh, I guess we might as well play some of the other videos since I'm here. But this Benatar one is probably the more important one. If you're going to watch one of my videos, it's probably this one is one to watch. <laughs> okay. Um, because it just it is a display of, of such... Uh, human failure in this. Even the intellectuals can't be consistently smart and as soon as the pressure's on them um, 
they um, abdicate. You know, it's all fun when they're playing with other, but when it's on them, when they have to do something, you know, they have to put their skin in the game. Then all of a sudden, it's not a fun game anymore. You know, playing philosophy. So he'll rag and talk about other people's psychologies, uh, but he won't point the the you're a ridiculous fool gun at his own bullshit, his own bullshit evasions of responsibility and such. All right, back. Um, so the Spatowski guy and Neil deGrasse Tyson. So the Spatowski guy doing the free will book, um, you know, determinism. Um, and unfortunately, this is also kind of a disappointment because he's doing it more as some social statement regarding how you can't blame people for being assholes when I would argue that... <laughs> Yeah, you can, because they're assholes kind of willfully, okay? They do know, um, you know, that they're takers and, um, you know, they haven't earned it and they haven't this and, they haven't, and they're, going to, they're just doing it anyway and because they can get away with it. And that's all it's really about. And, um, you know, there's nothing, it's not that that's not admirable, that it is just basically kind of a criminal behavior and it certainly makes you um, um, unmeritorious <laughs> as something to be consuming oxygen. <laughs> so you're wasting it. Your crime is you're a waste of air and food. <laughs> and somebody else should be given it uh, who isn't an asshole. That kind of simple argument, frankly. As a counter argument to that purpose in arguing about free will, like people are broken yes there is cause and effect there are reasons why they're not um, recognizing that they know 1 plus 1 doesn't equal 17 and um, they're saying what they're saying which is a lie yeah there's a reason why trolls are on the internet lying to other people uh, so what <laughs> the fact that there's a cause doesn't mean that there's any other recourse than to discourage and have contempt for the behavior. All right. What the hell is this shit? And I hate Degrassi Tyson now. I just I don't just dislike him. I never liked him. So, but I used to say, okay, he's got he's got a nice voice. Uh, <clears throat> you know, he's literate. Um, he's 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 clever enough to you know explain subjects and talk about them in some sort of coherent way. But you know, he's just. He's just grown so repugnant because he's always clowning. It's always a joke. It's always trivial. And I just can't stand that quality in human beings. Just hate. I hate comics. Hate them. Yep, thanks for asking. Okay, Chuck. Nice a professional stand up comedian and actor. Here's a. Oh, brother. Uh, imagine he does this every show. And so why is he having a show anyway? Why is he talking to what, whatever? I called it a parrot, but you, know, you could call it all kinds of other silly things. What's the purpose of this, 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 you know, blob of Play-Doh he's including in the conversation? Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, I don't know if I'd mix the subjects, frankly. Really, the same thing the human behavior versus the minky behavior. Um, all right, so yeah, there's different, th you know, there's so many little things that are just irritating. I mean, the fact that the Spalaski guy he did get an honorary degree, you know, by the National Surgeon Council or something, Brain Surgeon Council, <laughs> and it's, but he, he's not a surgeon. I mean, he, you wouldn't want him maybe even to dress a wound. You, you know, maybe he doesn't know how to do anything, you know. It's just kind of stupid to call somebody a, a doctor of neurosurgery when they're not surgeons. I mean, it's, you know, I just think that's getting way too bogus. I mean, surgery is a specific thing. You don't, you know, a general subject, a doctor of physics, okay, doctor of medicine, almost, but uh, surgery? I mean, it's a very specific bunch of stuff you have to learn for surgery. 
it was just a big, <laughs> indifferent <laughs> universe. It, it was in so they think it's all funny. <laughs> See, but I was really impressed by that. You know, when I heard, wow. You know, how could this guy do all this crap? How could he live with fucking baboons? You know, get a medical degree. He's got a psychology degree. And he spent all that time learning how to do surgery. How the hell did this guy do that? And, you know, he didn't do that. Oh, it's all, it's all for nothing. All, all of those Civil War dead. You know, all the, all, you know, well, the Civil War injured, right? Because they don't... Yeah, so I'm just making, you know, it's all, they're laughing at the fact that life doesn't have any purpose, and it's, ah, <laughs> you know, joke's on us, ain't it? Oh, man. And you're just saying, shouldn't this be a real subject to you people? Can anything be a real subject to you? Uh, you know, the the fact that you're, you know, we are chasing our tails, ha, 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 you know. Uh, we're stomping on a bunch of things and killing them brutally and horribly. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, yeah. Exciting. <laughs> it's exciting when they have to touch my poo. Uh, so I was talking about trolling. <laughs> yeah. You know, and the whole psychology of the troll. Um, and <laughs> yeah. it was probably worth playing the video just for that little bit, but whatever. I'll, I'm not going to give it to you for free. You're going to have to go earn it. Hawk versus sending him back from more jail. And the single best predictor was how many hours it had been. Right. So so this is the single best predictor of the outcome of a trial or a judge's decision was what he had for lunch or when he ate lunch. And it's just this is where they take statistics or experiments and they just make a complete mess of reality. Because we, they, we know that's not the single best predictor. It's just you didn't look at any of the other predictors. This was the one you happened to be focused on, so it's not the single best. It's the only one you were sampling for, you jackasses. I mean, you can't even figure that part out. You're a neurosurgeon, and you can't figure out that if it's the only thing you're looking for, you can't call it the single best thing we found because it was the only thing you were looking for. I mean, you were in a big puddle of diamonds and you were looking for a gold tooth. Okay, so you found a gold tooth and you say, look, it's the best thing we found. Well, no, you found all those diamonds, but yeah, well, we weren't looking for those. Oh, shit. Well, very good. They're not going to be, oh yeah, I'm, sure. I'm in the mood to take a test. No, they're going to be like, fuck you and your test. All right, so obviously we know that our mood is a marginal influence, okay? That you can drive a car without it, with a headache. You can, you can even be a little drunk and still drive, um, you know, moderately well, uh, that kind of stuff. But yes, it diminishes your functionality a little. It makes you more marginal, but it's marginal. It's a marginal influence. It's not the deciding factor and all that crap, whether you're going to turn left or whether you're going to turn right as you're going to the store, when you know turning right is the way to the store, that judgment isn't going to be completely corrupted because, uh, you know, you had a ham sandwich instead of a bologna sandwich for lunch. It's not going to be the most critical decider in which way you turn. None of that crap's going to happen. Oh, what a great... And... Are you hangry? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, uh, I'm glad I missed that commercial. Um, so there was some Snickers commercial that apparently fixed your hangry. I don't. I can't, I can't remember the joke, but it had something to do with hungry versus angry, and that somehow having a Snickers will make it all all right. And now you can go be a judge again, and you won't make silly decisions. Oh, too silly is find a way to mention that it's your birthday. There's even been a study showing judges... All right, so there's even been a study showing that the crane operator on his birthday actually is worse at operating his crane, that there's a higher percentage that he drops all the metal on people because he's too busy humming happy birthday to me, happy birthday to me. Yeah, he's too preoccupied thinking about his big cake at home. And, you know, maybe his wife will buy one of them chicks to pop out of the birthday cake for him. And, oh, do, 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 do. So, yes, there's a statistical correlation between people having or going to work on their birthday and screwing up at their job because it's their birthday. Oh, fuck this. I mean, it's so trivial, so silly. And this is what they've turned a free will debate into. You resonate with everything you've said thus far. But I have to bring in 
sort of the physicist's perspective of free will, where if every action has a, a preceding action to it, you just take that all the way back, so it's no longer in your consciousness. Right, so that's really not the physicist part, right? So, so, so um, and we know that cause and effect doesn't have anything to do with, like you could argue the cause and effect that made us have a brain, and then the cause and effect that meant that the brain wasn't of any value if it didn't do right um, approximations of its reality. That if it didn't accurately model reality, it wasn't going to be of any use. So if you, you know, if, it, if, if your brain was telling you the tree is in the wrong place, then your brain wouldn't be of any value, right? Or the bear, or, you know, if your brain was confusing its claws, you know, uh, with its belly button or something, it's not going to do you any good. You have to be able to accurately model the world. And so the fact that the brain was inevitably going to be an accurate modeler of reality, okay, wasn't some one fact, it was inevitability because it couldn't exist in any other form and be useful. So it wouldn't be evolutionary selected for if it didn't work. If your eyes didn't work, you wouldn't have them. <clears throat> it's more like everything about you is redundant and impervious to being blown up like yeah so i was just still getting to the point that all these little minutia crap isn't going to decide whether you're republican or a democrat okay those decisions are going to be made by a whole bunch of circumstances and a whole bunch of exposures to different influences and clearly there can be one or two that you'll pick out of your brain as key moments where you decided well, I can never vote with that guy. <laughs> okay, if he's on that side, then I can't be on that side. You know, those kind of choice, those kinds of decisions. But obviously, you wouldn't have been leaning. You have to be leaning that way to start with. Okay, it's about tipping something. And it's, so it takes a, a bit of energy before it really does push one way or the other. A little wind. That car. <laughs> the little winds aren't going to... The little winds don't make the decision the 500 wins before the little wind made the decision. We realize there's something very wrong in that we run the world on the notion that it's okay to treat some people way better than average. All right, so, yeah, life isn't fair. Um, and, uh, you know, that that's not a free will subject either. You know, how we respond to it, whether or not we fix it or not. You can talk, that has something to do with our will. You know, whether we have a will to create a better world or um, to uh, demand it to be better or say we're not going to do it at all. If we're going to do this job badly, then we're not going to do it at all. I just start talking. Podcast. Oh, dear. It's commercial. Ugh. Ugh. Ice. It just goes through the bits, okay, processes the input and produces an output. And every single tick and every single wheel turn, okay, is there for a reason, okay? It's been created by a previous condition. All right, so I didn't mean to imply that it's there for a reason beyond the previous reasons. Um, so, yeah, everything's built out of uh, this cause and effect, but all the cause and effect is all traveling, all the mutations of human beings are traveling through the, the, um, the they have to travel the gauntlet, okay, of evolutionary uh, pressure that requires it to be um, not a negative, and it doesn't have to be a positive influence, but it can't be a negative, you know, it can't hurt your functionality in any way. And yes, it can be a hidden potential. So you could argue that the first humans that had a bigger brain weren't doing much with it. It was a tiny marginal asset because they didn't have language and they didn't really create the whole idea of really expanding intelligence or using it. They hadn't gone to, I mean, a human being that doesn't go to any cultural school, that is, it doesn't have any cultural influences, doesn't learn about any devices, doesn't learn words, doesn't do any... I mean, they're locked in a Helen Keller kind of ignorance. And the only way out of that is language. And obviously the first smart humans didn't have it. So they had a brain capable of going to high school, but they didn't have a high school to go to.
Oh, and that be the end. Mostly. All right. We'll concede that it's the end <laughs> anyway. So I don't know if I'll go back to that subject. I've already done it so many times. I just I just had an impulse to say, oh, I hate the Grassy Tyson. Let's see what a mess he makes of the subject. Um, so it's more of a personal indulgence. But anyway, it's, uh, um, uh, always worth hearing some nuanced element to the argument. And again, it's unfortunate that the... the the Spitowski guy is basically just turning this into a referendum on somehow assholes can't help being assholes. And that's not, it's not a useful message. Because it doesn't matter whether they can help it. You have to punish bad behavior. It doesn't matter whether the bad behavior is on purpose or not. It just doesn't matter. Because if you don't punish it, you're punishing the good. That's the only way it works. If you don't, you have to put something has to be punished. Either either the good are going to be punished by the excesses of the, the the bad, or the bad have to take the punishment, even though they're not really guilty. They're just stupid. Well, it just doesn't matter whether they're just whether you're too stupid or too big of an asshole. It doesn't make any difference. You're carrying the anthrax. You're carrying the disease that corrupts, you know, destroys. You're unacceptably too broken, if that's the way to qualify it. Too dysfunctional. All right. And that's all that matters to our, that's all that should matter to our um, uh, justice system. Deterrence system is what it should be called. But anyway. All right, so enough. Until the next time and such and so forth and whatnot.